4-7, o carro de Ayrton Senna, que de manhã ainda não conseguiu o rendimento esperado. E você vê que os pelo menos conseguiu virar na casa do 1,19, como os outros pilotos. Mas a Ferrari atravessa, segundo o próprio Jean Lesi, a fase mais difícil da sua gloriosa história na Fórmula 1. É a equipe que mais grandes prêmios tem vencidos e então precisa se recuperar. Veja o Alesi passando pelo retão dos boxes de Interlagos. Nessa câmera o detalhe, o final do, do retão dos boxes, o S do Senna. E você pertinho da Ferrari. E entra na reta oposta. Você vai conhecendo os detalhes do circuito. Depois da reta oposta, ele vai para a curva do lago. Faz uma descida, o Alesi, até chegar no Laranjinha. Agora o S. Na segunda perna do S, a curva do Pinheirinho. E o Bico de Pato. Alesi entra agora no mergulho. Chega a atingir no fim desse mergulho 240 por hora. Junta, subida dos boxes e de novo ele vai para o retão. Veja como ele vai para o final do retão. E o tempo de Alesi. 1,19,513. É o tempo de Alesi melhor em relação ao tempo da manhã. É o começo do treino, a expectativa de provisório do Grande Prêmio do Brasil. Reginaldo Leme. Boa tarde, amigo da Globo. Você está vendo aí a Ferrari fazendo a sua primeira volta cronometrada oficialmente num treino aqui em Interlagos em 1992. A pista parece em ótimas condições, parece inclusive ter melhorado em relação ao treino da manhã, tanto que o Alesi na sua segunda volta e na primeira em velocidade lançada já consegue bater o seu próprio tempo da manhã. Mas o que importa mesmo é essa luta de Senna e Mâncio, que daqui a pouco vai começar, o Mâncio já está na pista e o Senna deve demorar um pouquinho mais, vocês viram agora há pouco, o carro da preparado para esse treino. Uma luta o que Senna tem que fazer muito para se aproximar da Williams, se aproximar. Pelo que a gente viu de manhã, com uma diferença entre Manso e Senna de 2.3 segundos. Aí então o Manso vai iniciar a sua primeira volta e nós vamos ficar aqui na expectativa para ver se o Senna consegue se aproximar um pouco da Williams, preparando o carro para a corrida. Mais um Manso. Vencedor das duas primeiras provas do campeonato de 92, na África do Sul e no México, de ponta a ponta. Ele passa inteiro para você, depois da página. 1, 17, 213, foi a melhor volta do Nigel Mansell, com uma média de 201, 650 por hora. Você acompanha a evolução da volta de Nigel Mansell. Saiu do Laranjinha, está entrando agora no S. A parcial em relação a Jean Lesi. Vamos acompanhar. O Jean Lesi fez a primeira parcial, 48,903. Veja como está mais rápido. 1,764. O inglês é de Ele já vai se dirigindo para a reta dos boxes. A junção, a subida... E lá vem Mansell. Vamos acompanhar o tempo. Está aí ele chegando para completar a volta. 1,17, 1,16, 849. Ele diminuiu menos 2, 664 em relação ao Alesi. E baixou o seu tempo no treino da manhã. Sensacional a volta de Nigel Mansell. 1, 16. 849 na primeira tentativa. Exatamente. Na primeira tentativa ele já consegue ficar a meio segundo do recorde oficial da pole position, que é do Ayrton Senna do ano passado, 1,16,392. E baixando em relação ao tempo que ele fez, 
já também quase meio segundo. Quer dizer, ele ainda pode melhorar bastante. Ele continua na pista. O circuito de Interlagos tem 4.325 metros. Veja como ele já diminuiu a primeira parcial. Já está 0.464 mais rápido. Andando muito a Williams com o motor Renault, com a suspensão ativa e com o Nigel Russell em grande forma. Russell já vai partir para completar a segunda volta dele. Aí está, a ponta aqui no retão. 1.16.849, um o melhor tempo. Mansell voa. Menos 0.652. 1.16.849. Um 197, o novo recorde da pole, a pole de Ayrton Senna no ano passado, 1.16.3, Mansell já faz 1.16.1, 1.16 baixíssimo, com chance, se quiser forçar, se quiser continuar, de baixar até da casa de 1.16. Continua muito difícil a situação para os adversários da Williams, não resta dúvida. Sometimes a question of luck as well. But going out when the circuit is clear of traffic is worth doing. We saw at the end of the session this morning that the track was very busy. Too many people on the track at the same, tri at the same time trying to get a fast lap in and really there was too much traffic. Mansell went out at the beginning of this afternoon session. Very little traffic and has already improved on his, the pole time that Edson Senna set for last year's Grand Prix. E aí toda a emoção do Grande Prêmio do Brasil. A equipe McLaren que está estreando o carro novo hoje. Uma estreia que para alguns foi precipitada, foi antecipada pela necessidade. Para outros não tinha mais jeito de evitar, Reginaldo. Sem dúvida ela foi antecipada. Agora é um trabalho primoroso que a McLaren vem fazendo. Conseguindo trazer esses carros para o Brasil em situação de emergência. Porque os, os carros no, que ela normalmente usaria vieram do México. São os três, ela embarcou outros três modelos novos, foram montados praticamente dentro dos boxes, quer dizer, um trabalho muito bem feito. Agora, é um carro que está começando, tem muita coisa nova, tem muita coisa de inovação na parte eletrônica, com aquele sistema fly -by, que eles chamam de fly-by-wire, que é sem fio, a aceleração por impulso eletrônico e tudo mais. Tem muita coisa para se desenvolver ainda nesse carro. E, enfim, o que vale é o trabalho que a equipe teve e é o trabalho que Senna vai ter, Senna e Berger vão ter aqui em diante. Enquanto isso, Ivan Capelli vai completando a sua volta. 1,19,944, mais 3,747 em relação ao tempo do Nigel Mansell. E dá para você perceber a diferença flagrante de uma equipe que sempre foi de the team on the ground and the management back in Maranello and really he just observes how things are being run on the day he looks at how the team operates at the venue at the racetrack and goes back and says you're doing things this way I don't think that's right maybe you should try doing something else he doesn't have a direct role of management but his role the team considered to be very important he's certainly a man who's got tremendous experience and knowledge of motor racing and he's been with the best teams in the world And when he was at Ferrari, they were the best team in the world. Well, 159A2. Well, we were talking about Niki Lauda and Ferrari. Nigel Mansell has sneaked out of the pits and done a 159A2. And I would say that is rather... Isso mostra toda a dificuldade da escuderia italiana. Claro, o objetivo agora é outro. É terminar a prova para que o carro possa ser testado em condições de corrida. A volta mais rápida de Mansell... 1,15,982. Uma nova volta de Nigel Mansell, baixando da casa dos 15, 204,92 a velocidade em quilômetros. Ele faz 1,15 alto, baixa da casa dos 15, 1,15,9. Nigel Mansell, numa fase em que não há mais o que dizer sobre ele. O carro ajustado, o carro perfeito e Mansell fazendo o diabo, enquanto Ricardo Patrese está se preparando, 226 grandes prêmios disputados, o piloto que mais grandes prêmios disputou, 5 vitórias, 7 poles, é a carreira deste italiano de 37 anos, Ricardo Patrese da Williams, que já está no cockpit para tentar repetir a performance do Mansell, não sei se dá para repetir, mas
mas para a equipe chega perto vai ser a sequência desse trabalho vitorioso de início de temporada. Olha, atenção que entrou uma brava nos boxes com início de incêndio. A parte traseira já queimando, olha aí, está o carro. É a Tiro de Guilá. Veja aí. A Tiro de Guilá. Foi atendido pelos bombeiros, mas quando ela entrou, já as labaredas eram bastante, já haviam bastante altos e os bombeiros socorreram ali. Problema no carro da Tio. Você, Olivier Guilá, você tem aí a imagem? O carro que tem o motor Ilmo, muita fumaça, um princípio de incêndio, o trabalho rápido da equipe, veja o extintor de incêndio já sendo acionado e o carro vai ser recolhido. Vale lembrar, Cleber, que a Tyrrell treinou muito bem hoje pela manhã no treino livre. O próprio Guiar fez a, obteve a décima colocação, mas o seu companheiro de equipe, o André de César, ficou com o terceiro tempo, 1,19 um e 1. Um. Quer dizer, foi de todos os pilotos o que mais se aproximou dos Williams. Você teve mais uma vez a informação, 1,15,982 é o melhor tempo de Nigel Mansell, que continua na pista. Já baixou. 1,15,703. Está impossível, Nigel Mansell. A cada volta ele melhora o seu rendimento. E o Ayrton Senna na expectativa. Observando, ainda sem o capacete... Esperando ajustes no McLaren para que depois tente fazer o que é muito difícil. Unbelievable, but really, I think this is a function of the racetrack getting cleaner and cleaner. The Goodyear tire, the C tire that was used in Mexico, that's exactly the same tire that we have here for Brazil. The Brazilian circuit is a very much more abrasive circuit, and it may well be generating more heat, making the tire work more than we saw in Mexico. But right now, Nigel Mansell just totally dominant in this Friday afternoon qualifying. We've had 14 cars out on the circuit so far. The last, the latest one to join the circuit is Ricardo Petrezzi. Nigel Mansell, 1.15.703 fastest. Then, John Alessi in the Ferrari, and 1.19.340. Then, Stefano Modena in the Vessel Jordan Yamaha, 1.19.598. Then, Ivan Capelli. Carl Wendlinger is fifth, Michaela Alboreto is sixth, seventh Mika Hakkinen, eighth Eric van der Poel, ninth Okio Katayama, and tenth JJ Leto. And I think we're all, we're all waiting for Ricardo Patrese to do his qualifying run. Yes, Patrese, I'm sure, will feel very confident because he will have been watching the times Nigel Mantles just recorded. And in this morning's session, in fact, Patrese was just under half a second off Mantles' pace. So one has to assume that we're going to see something at least in the 116 from Ricardo Patrese. But we have yet to see the two Marlboro McLarens, Ayrton Senna and Gerhard Berger, with very long faces. We saw Ayrton Senna looking at the monitor from his pit just a few minutes ago. And the new McLaren, the MP47, has not looked the most comfortable car on the racetrack here so far. Bouncing around a lot, unstable on the racetrack, of course it is its first event. The car has only tested in England, it hasn't run, but hasn't run really seriously with other race cars at a Grand Prix event, but they have a lot of leeway to make up. Well, looking at Ricardo Petrese's second flying lap, his first flying lap was a 1.18.7, and that puts him second for the moment, but this lap will, will undoubtedly be quicker than his last lap. He's 1.4 seconds slower than Nigel Mansell's fastest lap. And here on board and in the Lagos. John, you've raced here on the old circuit. Passando com mais 1.4. Ele pode chegar até na casa de 16. Se fizer uma boa volta, uma boa complementação de volta. Vamos acompanhar. Aí vai o Patrese. Vai passar de 16. Acabou não fazendo a grande volta. Perdeu o tempo depois. 1.18.007. Já é melhor que o seu anterior ainda longe da casa de 1,15 do Mâncio. Bom, enquanto isso, o carro do Mâncio foi seguro ali na pesada. Tchau, para do Leste. Passou pela curva do Pinheirinho. Toma o caminho do Bico de Pato. Passou com mais 1,2. Vem embaixo agora a Ricardo Patrese. Você vê o equilíbrio da Williams. A suspensão ativa. O câmbio automático. O barulho do motor. 
Vamos com a Patrese completar essa volta. Com 17, 591. Mais 1.888. O seu próprio tempo Continua em segundo lugar Com uma diferença de quase dois segundos Para o Jean Alesi que é o terceiro E você curtiu o toque preciso Automatic gearbox. So really, to say this is a glorified test session is injustice to the McLaren team. But they have a lot of learning yet to do with this new car. New method of construction of the chassis. And 45 McLaren... Claro que ele tem, assim como o Mansell tinha. Eu acho, é bem provável que a, essa diferença de 2.3 caia um pouco. Mas, de qualquer forma... A diferença grande ainda vai existir. E fica a esperança do Senna, da McLaren, eu tenho impressão, muito mais para... Nigel Mansell, Michael Schumacher está tomando a track, ou Michael Schumacher está tomando a track, e ele é o terceiro fastest for the moment, Jean Alesi é o fourth, Stefano Modena, fifth, e Pierluigi Martini em sexto place. E é JJ Leto, crossing the line. And again, the Ferrari engine, the Lara, are, well, quicker, if not just a little bit quicker only, than the Ferrari Ferrari. Well, we saw the Scuderia Italia car swapping who is the quickest Ferrari driver of the weekend with the Ferrari, the factory Ferrari drivers. In the end, in fact, in the morning session, the General Lazy claimed the title to being the quickest Ferrari engine car, but Pierluigi Margini was really only hundreds of seconds behind him. Then we look at Roberto Moreno, who's tried to pre-qualify the Andrea Moda Formula car this morning in pre-qualifying, because yes, for the first time this year, we did have pre-qualifying. Five cars took the track, and Roberto Moreno in the Andrea Moda Formula car, the car who never turned the wheel, was unsurprisingly slowest of them all. Andrea Moda had a very disruptive entry into Formula 1, not only did Roberto Moreno not get very many laps, but Terry McCarthy, the nominated second driver in the team, who thought he was going to be driving, was informed last night that his super license was not available, that he didn't qualify for a super license, and therefore would not be permitted to take part in the weekend's proceedings. And uh, there had been a fairly contentious discussion taking place throughout, Saturday, throughout Friday here in Interlagos, And Perry McCarthy, a very unhappy man, he's waited 10 years to get the opportunity to become a Grand Prix driver and uh, very dissatisfied with the way the whole affair has been handled. Pisa has handed out... A... Corrida, eu provi no fundo o motor do Berger funcionando e o Michael Schumacher com o Benetton Ford V8 está na pista. O Schumacher, que tem sido também uma boa, uma ótima presença na temporada, está em terceiro lugar. 1.19.319. E vai completar mais uma volta. Vamos ver com quanto ele completa agora. 1, 18, 993. Melhora o seu tempo, Michael Schumacher. Vai para casa de 1 e 18. E mantém a terceira posição. Com mais 3 segundos. 1, 18, 993. Marcos Schumacher está em terceiro lugar, behind the dois Williams drivers. E em frente de Jean Alesi Ferrari. Stefano Modena está em quinto. Pierre Luigi Martini in sixth place, Andrea de Cesaris in seventh, eight Ivan Capelli, nine Carl Wendlinger in the March Ilmore, then Michela Alboreto and a lone, well, lowly 15th after a troubled, untimed session this morning is Martin Brundle in the second Benetton. We're looking at Ivan Capelli. You see the Ferrari just coming out of that right-hand corner twitching, and that's really what we've seen from the Ferrari all since the beginning of the year. In fact, in South Africa, this very advanced concept with an artificial well, a floor 
which is about three inches below the level of the bottom of the chassis. A very theoretical Ferrari, but not one that is in practice successful. And uh, I think that Ferrari will persist with this particular design until Harvey Postlethwaite can come up with something really let's consider more conventional. The idea that Ferrari have got in this car may not be a bad idea, but where it's gone wrong is they've introduced it before they've been able to fully understand it and exploit it. So I expect to see substantially altered Ferrari coming probably by mid-season. They may well keep this concept, but certainly not use it until they really understand it more. Well, we're looking at Ricardo Petrezzi, who's still second fastest for the moment. Nigel Mansell fastest, then Michael Schumacher and Jean Maletti. We continue after the break, first qualifying here in Brazil. Grand Premio di Spagna si torna quindi in Europa, poi avremo una doppietta importante Imola e Monte Carlo per poi tornare in Canada, quindi nuovamente in Europa con la Francia e poi il quartetto delle gare estive, se così si può dire. Per concludersi poi con Monza, Giappone e Australia. Ecco, secondo te Umberto, questa nuova McLaren, questi primi giri già, già brillante, eh, pensi che possa essere realmente la sfidante che tiene aperto il discorso del campionato nei confronti delle Williams Renault? Ma è quello che ci auguriamo tutti, perché un campionato noioso non interesserebbe proprio a nessuno. Bisogna dire che la nuova McLaren non l'abbiamo ancora vista in queste prove cronometrate del pomeriggio, l'abbiamo vista questa mattina che per un debutto eh, non è andata neanche male, bisogna dire che i due piloti si sono lamentati abbastanza del nuovo motore Honda questa mattina. E il motore che già è buono, sta vendendo con sua potenza toda. Il chassis, sem dúvida nenhuma, è molto buono. La Jordan è una equipe che tende a essere grande, molto brasileira. Maurício Gujaminho va per completare una volta. Ele que vai agora abrindo o seu caminho para esse treino no Grande Prêmio do Brasil. Passou o Maurício, passou em 1, 31, 865 nessa volta. Ele melhorou em relação à outra, mas ainda está se aquecendo. Agora parece que tirou o pé o Maurício Gujomim e não deve tentar nada nesta volta. Ma vedendo como estão andando outras máquinas com o motor forte, sobretudo a Benetton, e non dimentichiamo che la Jordan avrebbe forse potuto avere anche lei i motori ufficiali Ford forse quello di Eddie Jordan è stato un passo falso perché da quella che era la macchina la grossa sorpresa dello scorso anno si è ridotto ad avere una macchina che fino, uh, fino adesso non è, non è stata sicuramente all'altezza probabilmente anche per i problemi dovuti al motore non hanno consentito né, a, né al povero Modena sfortunatissimo l'anno scorso quando uh, ebbe collatire i motori Honda e quest'anno quando è passato Almighty blow up, and I think was the oil from that blow up that we saw smoldering away, smoking away in the pits. But now we're looking at Gerhard Berger, who's about to get onto the circuit in our Friday afternoon qualifying session here live in Interlagos. And Berger again, not particularly happy with his MP47. Now they've been making a lot of changes to both Senna and Berger's cars in the hour and a half between the morning and the start of this afternoon session and we're just going to have to see how McLaren learned something from that one and a half hours this morning or are they still really in the dark? Well we're looking at Mauricio Guzman at the moment in the spare Jordan Yamaha his teammate Stefano Modena is fifth and Mauricio Guzman is in the spare because this morning he blew an engine Yes and that was a particularly good engine that Guzman it just suddenly he said he came round just up to the left hand corner before you start to come up the straight and just bang that was it the engine flew into a thousand bits and pieces but that man there had none of those problems whatsoever the president of Renault sitting alongside Nigel Mansell Mansell really has not got much more to do today he I'm sure will go out on a second set of, of race tires as almost saying qualifying tires because such is the difference between Mansell and Petrezzi and then the rest of the grid you think he was on qualifying tires, but in fact Mantle, like everybody else, running on Goodyear C race tire. Well, we can see the caption say 19 pole positions. I think we can fairly safely say it's his 20th here in Brazil because at the moment he's nearly two seconds quicker than anybody else. And that's Ricardo Petrezzi, his own teammate. 
seen an improvement from Eric Comas at the moment. He's 13th, 20.505. Eric Comas, the winner of the bike race yesterday, there was a bike race for mechanics, and Eric Comas decided to have a go when he won that, just in front of Johnny Herbert. But what I find surprising is that Comas is so f so much quicker than Cherry Bootson. Well, I'm sure Bootson is also wondering, but I suspect that Bootson's session this morning was fairly troubled because one has to assume as fast as Eric Comas is, Bootson isn't exactly slow. And in fact, in the morning's straight line speeds, as we pointed out already, Bootson, in fact, was quickest down the intermediate section and he was third quickest past the pit. So something wrong in the handling department of Bootson's Ligier. Now, the Ligier has gone through another radical change in car setup and aerodynamics. Both Frank Derny and Gerard Ducarouge were summoned back to Manicourt on the Saturday night before the Mexican Grand Prix to answer to TDs as to why their car's performance was so poor. Some of that has translated into an improved performance, certainly for Eric Comas. Comas just improved, he's now in 11th, his time 1 minute 20.437, just outside that exclusive top 10 club. That is, of course, by Mansell with Patrese second, Schumacher third, John Alesi fourth, Stefano Modena fifth, Pierluigi Martini sixth, Andrea De Cesare seventh, Ivan Capelli eighth, Carl Venlinger ninth, and Michele Alberto tenth. Now, Alberto and Suzuki were both very impressive this morning. Michele Alberto had a blow up as well, so he had to jump into the spare car. And the Foodworks Mugen team have made a lot of progress. They've been really struggling to try and control that Mugen, formerly the Honda V10 engine. And really the reason is the Honda Mugen engine is a heavy engine, it's long, the weight is very high up. So in changes of direction or anywhere where you want... ...décimos, mas ele sempre tem tido problema. ...the chassis, so they're trying to control that mass and they really have to find a way of doing so without upsetting the car and other parts of the circuit. They're getting there slowly. So that's part of the reason why we're seeing an improvement from the footwork team. I think a lot of the answer is in actually just stiffening the car up on the roll bars. And that sounds very simple, a very simple thing to do. But of course, there are downsides to doing that. But it is the control of the mass of that Honda V10 engine. Well, Ricardo Patrese, he started a qualifying lap, but he had to abort that. We can see that there are a lot of cars out on the circuit at the moment. We saw Nigel Mansell very early in the session when there were four cars out doing that 115.7, and it's a lot, lot harder at the moment to get into the 115 for anybody else than Ricardo Patrese. It's Patrese coming up to this double right-hand corner and hard on the brakes, down into second gear. O melhor tempo de Ricardo Patrese. Primeira parcial vai ser conferida. Mansell 46, 361. Patrese mais uma volta, fraca. And second, third, and then again short shifting into fourth, and probably then flat and fourth down through the left hand corner up to this final double left, third gear, and fourth, fifth, and sixth. Coming across the start finish line, it's something just over 300 kilometers, 187 miles an hour, but not really an improvement in fact. Look at that, some five seconds slower than Manson on that lap. Not indicative of what the Tracy is capable of, what the Williams is capable of. Very often, a driver will have been in the pit, made a, a change, a mechanical change, to his car. He will spend a lap just getting the feel. Some drivers have got the ability, someone like Schumacher, for example, will just go out and blitz. He'll not take that lap just to, to feel his way back in. Generally, drivers that have been around for a long time, the mature drivers, people like the Tracy and many others, like to feel what a car does. They just don't believe. They don't go on blind faith. That sometimes accounts for those laps in the middle 20, low 20s. One would hope that Patrese now will feel confident and he can go and try and improve upon his previous best of 1 minute 17.591. Senna and Berger still sitting in their boxes. They have not yet been on the circuit. 
We're just over 35 minutes into this first time session on Friday afternoon. The only time session I hasten to add on Friday afternoon. Well, and behind Manso and Tracy, that's Michael Schumacher still in third, Jean Lazy still in fourth place, but Pierluigi Martini is now moved up to fifth and demoted Stefano Modena to sixth place. Andre de Cesarich is in seventh at the moment. Well, eighth place because Eric Gomez is now in seventh. No, Martin Brundle is in seventh place. Well, this is what we saw in the morning session. Suddenly there's a flurry of people running at the same time, all running flat. And uh, we had Martin Brundle, who was down in 15th place, suddenly up at the seventh spot. At the one minute, 19.641. He made it Mark Michael Schumacher. Still in third place at his one minute, 18.993. So Martin Bungle is 0.7 of a second behind teammate, but of course, four places behind them. What Martin Bungle really would be looking to do is that if he can't beat Michael Schumacher, at least to get onto the same row as he did in Mexico as Schumacher. And we saw really a great race from Schumacher and from Bungle in Mexico two weekends ago. Well, Ayrton Senna is ready to go out and try and get that pole position, but so is Nigel Mansell. His helmet back on. What he'll do, we'll find out after the break here on Eurosport. Registrazioni che vengono fatte. Dovete pensare che così come sono le prime prove per i piloti, sono anche le prime prove per le strutture televisive dei paesi che eh, ospitano il Gran Premio e che appunto in queste prove possono cominciare a mettere a punto le telecamere, i ritmi di ripresa e così via. Si conclude il primo giro di Mansell, scusate, di, della McLaren di Berger, eccolo sul traguardo adesso. Ha ripreso la pista dopo 36, praticamente dopo 36 minuti, perché 37.44 di passaggio lento sul traguardo, mentre adesso anche Senna è in pista. È una fase interessante questa. Del... Hey. Super. Perché abbiamo una Ferrari in quarta posizione fino a questo momento e che comunque se la difesa molto bene anche stamani, problemi piuttosto per capelli, non direi non per Alesi che ha dato già una buona prova e adesso abbiamo questo debutto ufficiale della McLaren MP4 7 con il nuovo motore siglato 122 della Honda motore che come dice appunto la comunicazione della casa giapponese è stato here at Interlagos and we're looking at Ayrton Senna who is doing his very first lap of the first qualifying session for the Brazilian Grand Prix 1992 and that's after 40 minutes into the session. Yes, McLaren have been working flat out, they've been making, oh well I can't think of how many changes but certainly I'm sure mechanical as well as aerodynamic changes to Berger and Senna's car. Senna came out He's just about to come up to the completion of his out lap. Now, getting on with the program, accelerating up, coming up to the start finish line. Aprindo a sua volta. Sai da reta dos boxes. Você tem o detalhe da imagem. Saiu do seu S. Depois da curva do sol, retou a reta ou costa. E aí o Senna, agora sem tirar a mão do volante. Novidade para você. Atingindo 290 por hora depois do retão da reta posta. Senna faz a curva do Laranjinha. Usa a zebra. Vem com pista toda. Vamos confirmar a parcial. Está numa volta alta. Uma volta alta.
falta ainda de aquecimento do carro, dos pneus, do Senna. Quem vai? Quem vai? Ayrton Senna, que neste fim de semana vai lutar pela sua segunda vitória aqui no Brasil. Depois de muita tentativa, muito esforço, o ano passado ele conseguiu vencer. Veja, mais oito. Uncomfortable, very unstable over the bumps. Not a driver being really able to, to get the power on early and say comparison to the Williams or even the Benetton. Senna opens it. Because it was his very first flying lap, really. I don't know about cold tires, it's something else. I mean, those tires have had a, a jacket on them for probably the last hour and a half. They'll have been preheated something to about 90 degrees. And they would not have lost very much temperature. The outlook, here we see, coming up under braking, and the car just loses a grip. Goes into a nice broadside slide. A bit embarrassing, because that's the corner named after Ayrton Senna. That's the curve of the center. Well, we've got Gerhard Berger up in the top 10. He's ninth quickest at the moment. A 1.19.870. Still a very, very long way off pole position, but at least he's in the top 10. And, and I think, John, we mustn't forget, it's a brand new car. I mean, everybody expects McLaren to sort of come here with a new car and blitz everybody away, but you can't, I suppose, with a brand new car. I think that previously McLaren had... Entrou com tudo no retão. Abre mais uma volta aí, então Senna. Passou pelo ponto que agora a Copa aí perdeu o controle, faz o S do Senna. Veja aí a nova aerodinâmica da McLaren, o bico mais alto. Na reta oposta. Passou nesse ponto mais um em relação ao Mansell. Depois da curva do lago, Ayrton Senna vai para a laranjinha. Aos 42, ele sai do S. Senna no bico de pato. Você tem a imagem de dentro da McLaren e o desenvolvimento do carro aqui no canto direito do vídeo, embaixo. Observou com o polegar direito como ele muda a marcha. É uma mudança agora muito mais suave. Vai para completar a volta Ayrton Senna. Vai fazer uma volta com tempo alto. 1,19,577. Não foi melhor nem que a sua volta no treino livre de hoje de manhã. Mais 3,874. Lower than Nigel Mansell. Might as well say it's a year in terms of times. 3.8 seconds in a lap. And a moment in 15 second lap is just enormous. And I think really McLaren have got to concentrate on trying to get onto the second row of the grid. Because right now it does not appear that McLaren have got any answer at all to the performance of those two Williams winners. Well, Ayrton Senna just continuing that fast pace he has at the moment and in the picture we'll see Nigel Mansell 1.15.7 then Ricardo Patrese, Michael Schumacher, Jean Alesi, Andrea de Cedric is up to fifth and we can see Gerhard Berger on our little computer up to fourth at the moment with a 1.19.277 so Gerhard Berger is getting quicker and quicker and Ayrton Senna is just about to finish a lap. Yes, you can see Senna as he comes out of that final lap time corner onto the straight, but the back of the car just sort of skips sideways momentarily. A quicker lap again from Senna. On 19.4, so Senna 
when he's still in sixth place. Marginal improvement, but Berger just on the second row of the grid, and that's red, and Senna will really be trying to get. Certainly in this Friday session, we don't anticipate saying the two McLarens doing better than the second row of the grid, but they've still got to go quicker than Michael Schumacher, who's presently in third place. He is the only man so far outside of the two Williams who have broken into the 1 minute 18 second bracket and Schumacher's time, 1 minute 18.993. Gerhard Berger on the second row alongside Schumacher with 1 minute 19.277. John Lazy fifth, 1 minute 19.340. And he's got Ayrton Senna alongside him in sixth, 1 minute 19.400. And Ayrton Senna, well, that's already eight seconds slower than Nigel Mansell's fastest lap. So that'll be an aborted try to get further up the grid. But we're looking at Nigel Mansell. He's, well, back on the road. Yes, he's on the second set of tyres now. I think we're just 46 minutes into this first time session here live at Interlagos. And Nigel now just driving up to speed. This is really purely academic in terms of uh, no one is really going to beat Manson today. But it's nice because the driver gains too much. You know, you've got that advantage over the opposition. It is nice just to go out and do it for yourself. Manso making sure he's got the gap to do that lap because he's so much quicker than anybody else and he's behind Eric van der Poel who's like eight, nine seconds slower at the moment than uh, Nigel Mansell so Mansell needs a big gap to do that time and he sort of backs off and lets Martin Brundle through yes but Mansell looking for the clear lap Brundle coming up behind him on a flying lap Mansell of course pulls over and lets Brundle go through he stays over on the left hand side of the track one of the two losers is going through Mika Hakkinen. So Mansell just cruising around and uh, he'll find his clear lap and then give us another display of truly outstanding Mansell-esque driving. If we look at the top three, John, we see Mansell and Patrese being way quicker than anybody else. Then Michael Schumacher in third. But if we then go to Gerhard Berger on a 1-19-277. And we have Ayrton Senna improving to a 19-358. Oh, Pierluigi Martini is fourth now. And you're looking at Ukiyo Katayama who had a spin. But Martini is surprising fourth at the moment, a 19-245. But we have 10 drivers within a second. Well, that's competitive. Very competitive. In fact, this morning's session we saw a very similar situation. Apart from the two Williams drivers that were by far and away the quickest, there were eight drivers this morning in the 1 minute 19 second bracket, nine drivers in the 1 minute 20 second bracket, and a further eight in the 1 minute 21 second bracket. So we're really beginning to see the 92 Formula 1 season come alive, and it is very, very competitive. Well, Nigel Mansell just starting a fast lap, I suppose. His last up was a 24-7, just getting up to speed. But Pierluigi Martini, again, those Scuderia Italia cars are very, very quick. And I think as they go along, they learn about the monoshock, they learn about the car, they've got the aerodynamics sorted out, and the car is just plainly quick. Teammate JJ Leto is down in 17th place at the moment, but he's just over a second slower than Pierluigi Martini. Well, Nigel Mansell, who we're looking at now, at that intermediate stage was 1.7 second, seconds slower than his quickest lap so far. So this is not going to be another blinding lap from Mansell. Again, look at the traffic, Martin Brundle, Carl Venlinger, both now having to get out of Mansell's way. As I said, this lap is not another screamer from Mansell, but he's just looking for that clear lap. It's almost academic for Mansell to go out and try and improve this afternoon on that pole time, the provisional pole time he holds. Remember Mansell with a 1 minute 15.703. Teammate Ricardo Vitrezzi alongside him on the grid, but miles behind him in terms of time with a 1 minute 17.591. Mansell 1.8 seconds clear of Vitrezzi. 
Michael Schumacher, one minute 18.993, joined by Pierluigi Martini in the Scuderia Italia Ferrari, one minute 19.254. Those are the front two rows of the grid. Gerhard Berger on the third row of the grid, alongside Jean Alesi. Edden Senna on the fourth, alongside Andrea de Cesaris. And Stefano Modena and Martin Brundle on the fifth row of the grid, rounding out the top ten. And if you think it's the best qualifying performance ever for Pierluigi Martini, well, you're wrong because he put his Minardi on the front row in Phoenix in 1990. And I was there and I saw the very impressive performance indeed, but he was totally outshone on that particular day by John Alesi in the Tyrrell Ford and just, well, John Alesi on that day was truly mega. Well, Martin Brundle back in the pit getting a new set of tyres on his Benetton and he will try and improve in his 10th or 11th grid position now because Eric Thomas has leaped into the top 10 on the 1-19-5-4-1 and we're looking at Jean Alesi Alesi in the Ferrari the man from Nyon in Switzerland who made a well, astonishing debut during the French Grand Prix in 1989 where he was lying second for a while in the Tyrrell but finished fourth. Then he moved to Ferrari and he hasn't had the success yet people thought he was going to have. No, he hasn't. And uh, not for the lack of trying, look at him locking up the inside the left front wheel. He missed the corner as a result of that. He's gone lazy, only knows how to drive and that is absolutely flat out. He really loves qualifying sessions, he loved qualifying tyres, not really quite as disciplined yet as he needs to be in the terms of working with the car, working with the engineer, getting a really good race set up, he just loves qualifying and going out and driving as hard as he knows. But so Kaylee Alberetto now into the top 10 and his footwork with the Mugen V10, the former Honda V10 engine, this time on at 19.5 V3. And really, I think one of the big benefits that we're seeing out of the non-qualifying tyre situation is much, much closer grid. We're seeing people all running much closer in time, and that's got to be better for qualifying. It's got to be better for the viewers. It's got to be better for the public. Well, Jean Alesi currently sixth, seventh Ayrton Senna, eighth Andrea de Cesaris, ninth Michaela Alvaretto, tenth Eric Comas, and eleventh Stefano Modena. And I think that's all quite a surprise while John Alesi is just about to finish another flying lap. And that's looking like it's going to be quicker. No, it's not. If we go to the other end of the grid, we haven't seen Giovanna Amati yet. So we only had 29 cars, but Guzumin is 20th at the moment. Paul Valmondo, 21st. Aguri Suzuki, 22nd. Kerry Butson must be a disappointed 23rd. Johnny Herbert is 24th, Okiu Katayama 25th, and the last qualifier for the moment is Andrea Chiesa. Well, 27th is Christian Sigipaldi, 28th Olivier Gruyard, and 29th Eric van der Poel. And John Christian Fittipaldi, he must be under so much pressure, well, maybe as much as Ayrton Senna. Well, in a sense, Senna has been able to, to cope with the pressure. He's a much more mature man in terms of age and experience. And of course, he's raced in his home Grand Prix since 1984. And Christian has had tremendous uh, interest and excitement. Of course, his father, the family are, have always lived in Sao Paulo. And uh, he came here mid last week, hoping to have a nice quiet time as soon as he got here. All of a sudden, interviews, sponsor requests, and he hasn't had a chance to catch his own breath. Now that's probably not the reason why he's currently in 27th position. But pressure in your home Grand Prix, particularly the first time, and being a major centre of attraction. And also remember, Christian Fittipaldi is only 21 years of age. He was 24th quickest this morning, and we're looking at Riccardo Patrese. And while he was lapping on the circuit, we could also see Giovanna Amati out. And yes, John, seventh Stefano Modena. The Jordan Yamaha is going quicker and quicker. Well, all those people back at Silverstone who are responsible for getting the Jordan team here to Mexico. They've worked flat out since Mexico. Revisions to the ducting on the radiators have had overheating problems in South Africa. They managed to cure it partially in Mexico. They seem to have got a grip on it here in Brazil. And they'll all be 
sitting back at Silverton watching on Eurosport here live at Interlagos and they'll be very pleased indeed to see Stefan and Modena up to seventh place in the Friday afternoon's qualifying session. Well, Ricardo Petresi crossing the line at 125.4, so that was a slow lap for him. And there's no change at the moment in the top 10. And if we go to the other side of the great Giovanna Amati is out, and there we see Andrea de Cesare. He spun off the track, and Andrea John was third fastest this morning. Andrea was very, very impressive indeed. He was mighty this morning. Fortunately, he hasn't quite gone his way this afternoon. He's gone a ninth spot this morning. In fact, he was actually quite a bit quicker. When I say quite a bit quicker, I mean 0.3 of a second quicker this morning. And he's so far managed in the time session, the official time session this afternoon. Martin Brundle now in 10th place. His time, 1 minute 19.510. Michael Alan Schumacher just improved to 1 minute 18.749, consolidating his third place, second row of the grid. So Martin Brundle has got to find a little bit more time to get back up onto that second row of the grid. He would so dearly love to be on. But wishing and hoping ain't going to make it. You've got to get out there and do it. Well, looking at Ayrton Senna from the helicopter, Ayrton, who is in eighth place at the moment, behind Stefano Modena. Jean Alesi is in sixth, but it's incredibly close. We've got 11 drivers at the moment within a second. And that's a long time ago that it was that close. Well, as I say, it's due responsibility of responsibility this. It's down to race tyres. There are no more qualifying tyres here. Some people bemoan the fact, other people will welcome it. And I have to say, overall, I think it's better for Formula One. We're now seeing people having to compete in the tyre that they're going to race on. It's quite normal in other forms of motorsport that you qualify on the tyres that you race on. The excitement of qualifying tyres, of course, was a different issue. And undoubtedly, that qualifying tyre situation was remarkable. It was very special. I remember watching Ayrton Senna, Nigel Mansell, other drivers, Alan Prost sitting in the pits watching the monitor and then going out and doing those just remarkable laps. Different ball came right now. Ayrton who is trying to improve on his 119.358 which at the moment put him eighth on the grid. The number one, the man from Sao Paulo who's had 60 pole positions in 128 Grand Prix he's driven in so far and he's crossing the line now to start his Lap. Well, he hasn't got a lot of time left. There is just under two minutes to go in this first qualifying session here at Interlagos. And of course, you see it all live on Eurosport. And Senna being ninth at the moment. Because yeah, let's go. Oh, the top one. Olha aí, então, com mais 1.7 nessa parcial. Esse é o carro tremendo bastante. Tripidando muito a McLaren. Mas as duas mãos firmes no volante com o câmbio semi-automático que está sendo usado pela primeira vez hoje no treino oficial. O tempo do Ayrton. Mansell passou com 46.361. Ayrton vai fazendo uma volta com tempo alto. Mais 5.901. E talvez não tenha tempo para uma outra volta. O treino já tem 59 minutos. Aí o Ayrton Senna. Com 1 minuto e 10, ele sai da junção, pega a subida dos boxes. Entra no retão. Já com o tempo muito além do tempo do Mancha. Vai dar tempo dele dar mais uma volta. Agora com 59 e meio. I'm on the fast lap, bye bye Ayrton. And I think Patrese probably last time on that lap because he was quite close to Senna coming up to the corner just past the start finish line. But uh, I'm sure that had a small effect. I mean, his lap was just over 1 minute 18. His best lap so far is 1 minute 17.5. It's so easy in those situations to lose that half second. But now we're watching Ayrton Senna. Midway round, his lap, and 
really a very disappointing session indeed for him. Not the kind of outcome he was hoping for with this brand new McLaren MP47. As you've said, a very advanced car indeed. Fly-by-wire technology, automatic gearbox, revised new aerodynamics. And we see one of the, one of the Minardis just at this corner, but out of sight. Well, the flag's out, yeah. John. It's the end of the first qualifying session here at Interlagos, and it's uh, Nigel Mansell, a staggering 115.703. The professional pole for him. Then Ricardo Petresi, 117.591. Michael Schumacher on a 118.541. And I hope that's not going to change anymore with cars crossing the line. Pierluigi Martini, fourth quickest on the 118.953 and there we see a shunt and that is Johnny Morbidelli who's gone off yes that was the corner just as we come out of the start finish straight just saw a quick glimpse of Morbidelli's look at that slightly rearranged that might be called a piece of modern art but in fact it's a very damaged race car I was going to say you call that slightly rearranged John Gerhard Berger is in fifth the fastest of the new McLaren with the new Honda engine then Jean Alesi in sixth place, Andrea de Cesaris in seventh, Stefano Modena in eighth, Ayrton Senna in ninth, and Michaela Alvaretto, uh, sorry, Martin Brundle in tenth, Michaela Alvaretto is eleventh, and there we see a spin on the last lap of one of the Ferraris. Eric Comas is in twelfth, even Capelli thirteenth, and Carl Wen Wendlinger is fourteenth, but from Gerhard Berger in fifth to Carl Wendlinger in fourteenth, they're all in the 119 bracket. Bertrand Gascio is 15th, Johnny Morbidelli 16th, JJ Leto is 17th, 18th, Gabriele Tartini, and you can see that all on your screen now. 19th is Mika Hakkinen, Mauricio Guzumin, a bit disappointed, I suppose, in 20th place in the Spare Jordan. In the Spare Jordan, his own race car, of course, having a fresh engine fitted to it. And then 21st, Jerry Butson, 22nd, Paul Belmondo, he's qualified so far. Aguri Suzuki is 23rd. Christian Fittipaldi moved up to 24th place. Johnny Herbert, 25th, and that's a disappointment. Ukiyo Katayama, the last qualifier for the moment. And non-qualifiers so far here in Brazil, Andrea Chiesa, Olivier Gruya, Eric van der Poel, and Giovanna Amati. Well, this is first qualifying here from Interlagos. John, I don't think any surprises. No, I think the only surprise one might be looking at is just much the gap between Nigel Mansell and Ricardo Petrese. Of course, I think a lot of people are going to be looking and saying, have McLaren actually come up with a bit of a lemon in this new MP47? Well, I think we're going to have to wait until we see Saturday's qualifying session before we can really draw any judgments. Believe me, McLaren are not here for a picnic. They've got virtually the entire team from Woking with them, 45 people from McLaren, 23 from Honda, and the chief cook and bottle washer as well. They're not going to sit back and accept this. They will be working to, to narrow that gap between themselves, the competition, but in particular, Williams-Renault. Well, we can see what happens tomorrow here on Eurosport.